Hey there, how's it going? So I have a really cool CSS trick that I want to share with you today. So you know that we can create shapes with image blocks in Squarespace now that we're able to choose between different shapes depending on the ratio that we want to use for the image. Well, what happens if you actually want to apply those shapes to something else on the website? So perhaps maybe to a banner image or a gallery block or an auto layout. Well, that's where today's trick comes in. I'm going to be showing you how you can create pretty much any shape that you want for anything that you want in Squarespace. Now I'm going to be working today with a gallery block, but the same method or the same process applies to anything else that you want to target. The key thing here to keep in mind is that you need to take a look at the different containers that whatever it is that you want to modify is made up of and then choose the one that is actually going to help you achieve the shape that you want to have. All right, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm going to be working with 7.1, but this customization is something that you can apply to 7.0 as well. So I'm going to be working with a gallery block, but like I said, if you want to apply this to anything else on your website, you just need to make sure to target this specific container that is going to work for that thing that you want to modify. So that means that you may need to play around a little bit with the different options that you have until you find the one that is actually going to help you achieve the look that you're after. So basically what we're going to be doing here is using a CSS property called clip path. Now you may have seen that property before you may have heard of it before, but I want to walk you through the basics of it so that you understand how you can use it. And I also want to share with you a really cool tool that is pretty much going to do all of the hard work for us. So let's get started so I can show you how it works. So basically the clip path property is something that creates sort of like a mask on top of whatever it is that you're targeting. You can think about it like, for example, when you're using Photoshop that you're sort of clipping an image or something inside a different shape. So that's pretty much how this property works in websites. Now, in order to create the shapes, what we need to do is target whatever it is that we want to modify and then apply one of the different functions that clip path has available for us. So what I'm going to do is just look for one of the containers that I want to target here, and then I'm going to create my selector to be able to have that in place. So taking a look at the structure here of these slides. So here you can see, let me go all the way back up. So here you can see how we have our whole gallery block. All right. And so looking through all of the things that we have inside it, we can see that all of these little elements that we have in here, each of these are a separate slide. So each of these are like a separate thumbnail that we have inside the gallery. So I can go ahead and decide which part of this thumbnail or which part of this sort of global container for each of the slides I want to use to be able to apply that clip path. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this main one. And then I'm going to choose one of the ones that I have in here. So pretty much I have three options. Well, four if I count the bigger one, but I'm not going to be using that one. So I could use the main the margin wrapper container to be able to apply the clip path. I could use the A element itself. This one's called image slide anchor or I could go ahead and use the image element. Now for this particular block, I highly recommend staying away from the image element because the problem is that since the image element is usually bigger than the container that's holding it, if you apply clip path to the image itself, you're not really going to see the full shape in there. Like the shape is still going to be applied to the image. The mask is going to be applied to the image, but because that mask is going to be cropped by in this example, the square that I have here, we're not going to see the full thing. So basically what we have here is actually two um, options here to choose from. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the margin wrapper. Now, because I don't want to target like all margin wrappers across the website, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit more specific. And so I'm just going to look for a class that corresponds to the gallery block. So if I take a look up here, I can see that this like the slide, the one that's holding all of these other containers that we were just looking at, we can see that this one has a class of SQS gallery design grid slide, which seems super specific for this type of gallery block. So I'm going to be using that in my selector as well, just to make sure that things are very specific here. So let's just go ahead and use margin wrapper. And then I'm going to go ahead and look for that class SQS gallery design grid slide. I'm going to grab all of that. And then you're going to apply that to create my selector. All right. So now that we have this in place, what we need to do is bring in the clip path property. So clip path like so, 
And next, what we need to do is choose one of the functions available. So one of the functions is called circle. And basically what this one does is just creates a circle for us. So if I go ahead and use here circle, you're going to see how immediately we have that circle mask applied. And so now we have like perfect circles across all of the slides that we have in here, which is really cool. Now, another function that we have in here is called ellipse. However, if I were to apply ellipse to this one by one ratio image that I have right now, you're going to see how nothing really changes here. So let's just go ahead and save this real quick and then change the ratio for the images to see what that would look like. So I'm going to go ahead and select something else. Um, oops. Let's do here maybe this vertical one. All right, so here you can see how we have an ellipse there. And now I'm going to go ahead and use circle again just so that you can see the difference. So if I were to apply circle here, you're going to see how we actually get a full circle, which is slightly different than if you were using border radius 50% on anything like that. Because if you were to use border radius 50%, you absolutely need to have an image that is one by one to be able to get a full perfect circle. But in this case, clip path actually creates that full circle for us, regardless of the ratio of the image. However, what you can see here is that we actually get some extra space down here and up here because that's still the height of the full container. We're just getting like a snapshot of that circle or whatever is inside that container through that mask that has been created as a circle. So these are two of the main functions that you can use with clip path, but I actually want to focus on the third one, which is called polygon. So when we're using polygon, what we need to do is sort of pass on different coordinates for the different points that we want to have in that container to be able to create the shape that we want. So the best way to understand where these points are located and how these coordinates work is to actually look at something that I have here for you. So if you consider this one container on your website, it doesn't matter what it belongs to. We have this rectangular container in here, and then you need to picture that you have a Y axis and an X axis. And so the first coordinate that we're going to have here, the top left corner of that container is going to be the zero zero coordinate because it starts at zero on the X axis and at zero on the Y axis. So then if we move to the top right corner, we moved 100% to that right side of that container. And so now we have 100% on the X axis, but we still have zero on the Y because we haven't moved downwards. So then if we move to this bottom right corner, we get 100% and 100% as the coordinates for that specific point that we have there because we moved 100% vertically and 100% horizontally. And then last but not least, here on the bottom left corner, we have zero for the X axis because we didn't really move horizontally, but we have 100% on the Y axis because we moved vertically. So keeping these things in mind, you can see that, for example, if we were to tell our browser that we want the first point to be at zero, zero, but we want the second point to be at 50% zero, what's going to happen is that now this point is not going to be all the way out to the edge of the container is going to be half. So that means that now if we connect this dot to this dot that we have here, we have a slant. So depending on the shape that you want to create, you need to pass on those specific coordinates for the different points to the browser so that it knows what kind of shape you're thinking about. So for example, if we want to have something like a triangle over here, then that means that this point can no longer be all the way down here at 100% and 100%. It could be something around here, which would be about 50% X and then 50% Y. So that would be the middle point or where those two axes coincide. And so that would be the new position for this fourth point that we have in here. Now, I know that right now this may not be entirely visual and that you may be thinking like, Ugh, I don't really want to calculate like where the points are going to be sitting in if I want to create a shape. Like what happens if I want to use even more points than that? Let's say that I want to make a star or I want to make a cross or anything like that. Like how do I go about that? Well, here is where an awesome free tool comes in. So let me introduce to you to your new best shape creating friend called Clippy. So let's just go ahead and bring that up and show you how it works. 
So basically here in Clippy, this is the website. I'm going to leave it in the description below so that you can click that link. So basically what this tool does is helps us in a user friendly way to create any shape that we want to create. And then down here, you can see how it creates the code for us. So basically all we need to do is just play around with the position of these points that we have in here to create whatever shape it is that we want to have on the website as a mask. And then all we need to do is just grab this code from here and apply it to our code. Cool, right? Let's go ahead and play with some shapes so I can show you how it works. So let's just say that I want to create maybe this pentagon here. So you can see how now instead of having four points, we actually have five points. So Clippy just created this for us. And then here you can see on the code that now instead of having four things, so instead of having the zero, zero, hundred, zero, whatever, all of those four points that I showed you in the image, now we actually have extra points in here that Clippy is automatically placing for us or calculating their position for us. So if I wanted to create this Pentagon image or this Pentagon mask inside Squarespace, what I can do is just grab this code that I have underneath here. And then inside clip path, instead of using here the circle function, I'm just going to go ahead and use that polygon function. And then here I'm going to have all of the points that that thing requires to be able to create the shape. Now, of course, in this situation, what you need to keep in mind is that depending on the height and the dimensions of the container that you're working with, things may look a little bit more stretched out. So this doesn't quite work as the circle function that we saw before. In this case, because we're actually pointing to different coordinates inside the container that we're working on, then things can look stretched out. If for example, the 100% of whatever it is that we're pointing to is, you know, all the way down, it has like a different ratio from the width. So let's just go ahead and change this back to one one so that we can see um, the shapes a little bit more nicely. So if I set this back to square, you're going to see how now everything looks much better. And we have a really nice pentagon for all of the slides that we have on this gallery block. So let's just go ahead and try another shape. So here you have a couple of sort of default options. So let's say that we want to create this right chevron here. And then all I have to do is again, I can play around with the points if I want to. But in this case, I like the shape. So I can just go ahead and grab the whole thing that we have down here and then head back to the site replace that in here. And now I have Chevron shapes for all of the slides that we have in the gallery block. Now, let me show you two more things here. So the first one is this option that we have in here to create a custom polygon. So if you have something like, let's say, for example, that your client has a brand that has a specific sort of shape for the logo or maybe for like the different branding materials, and you want to try to recreate that as a shape for the images that you have on your client site. So in that case, what you can do is use this custom polygon function. And basically what you need to do is add as many points as you need and then position them where you want them to be so that you can recreate the shape from your client's brand. So let's say that I'm just going to add a couple of points in here. I don't really know how many. I'm just doing this very randomly. Um, let's say, I don't know, I want this and maybe another one here. So I'm done. These are all the points that I need to have in here. And then here you can click on finish decagon or whatever it is that it's going to tell you here. And then what you can do is just start moving them to wherever it is that you want them. And then of course, if you have like an extra one, you can just go ahead and click on this little X here and then you can get rid of it. Um, so let's say that we want something, I don't know, I can do something kind of random here. We have maybe something like that. And one quick thing that I want to mention is that, for example, if you wanted to create something like straight lines, what you can do is take a look at the different values that we have here in the code and then try to match the ones that are sort of next to each other. So, for example, here you can see that I have this green dot here. And then if I move it, the value actually moves here. So we can see that this one is at 43% from the Y axis. So if I want to make sure that this one is completely aligned with that anchor point that I have there, then what I can do is just start moving this one to see which number here or like which little color here is changing. And then here I can see that now for the Y axis of this red dot that I have here. Now, if I match that to 43, then I know that both things are aligned. So you can do the same thing for um, the X axis, the Y axis, it doesn't matter. So let's just say that I wanted this really weird shape here. 
So all I have to do is just, again, grab the code that we have down here and then use that here in my code. And now I have the really weird shape inside my slides. And now for the last thing that I want to show you here, which is actually the one that I'm most excited about, is I want to show you how you can actually create a hover mode with these custom shapes and have one turn into a different one. Now, the main thing you need to keep in mind here when you're doing this with Clip Path is that both the original shape and the shape that it's going to change to have to have the same number of anchor points. So let me show you how this would work. So depending on what you want to do, so depending on whether you want to maybe remove the shape entirely, or if you want to create like a different shape with this, what you can do is just go back into the Clippy website, and then you can just go ahead and play around with the position of the dots, depending on how you want that hover mode shape to look like. So let's say that I just want the shape to turn into a full square once I hover over the slide. So in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to get rid of any of the dots that I have here because I need them all. So you need to tell your browser the new position that each of those anchor points is going to have in the new shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and align them all to the square like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab this little code that we have in here. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my hover mode. So I have a tutorial on how to create hover mode. So I'm not really going to go in depth in here. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that when I hover over the slide, so I'm going to be using this little selector here, the one that's going to act as a trigger. And then I'm going to have that margin wrapper change in shape. So let's just go ahead and type that in SQS gallery design grid slide when that's on hover i want the margin wrapper to change shape and now what i'm going to do is apply that new clip path so again it's the same number of points they're just located in a different part of the container and now to be able to make this smoother because i already know that this is going to look like very abrupt like abrupt change what i'm going to do is go back into this snippet that doesn't have the hover mode and i'm going to apply a little transition here so let's just say transition all 0.5 and so now if i hover over any of the slides here you can see how now all the dots sort of reposition themselves to that new shape that we created and so now we have this really really cool effect when people hover over the slides so let's just do one more transition here so let's just do i don't know something fun um how about we just use one of these ones. So let's say that we want all of them to be a left chevron and then on hover, we want them to be a right chevron. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this, apply that as the default shape, and then I'm going to select the right chevron and then I'm going to use that as it is. I'm going to apply the clip path down here again same number of points and so now if i apply the hover mode or if i mouse over the images you can see how we have this really nice movement happening here all right before i let you go there's one last thing that i want to mention here and that is the compatibility that clip path has with some browsers so to make sure that this property applies to some browsers and some versions of those browsers it's very important that you use the prefix of WebKit. So to use this is fairly simple. What you need to do is just go ahead and grab the whole thing, the property and its value. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in here WebKit and then we're going to have dash dash. And then what you need to do is just apply the rest of the property there. So the addition of this WebKit prefix that we have in here, again, it just helps with the compatibility of this specific property for different browsers. So anytime that you want to use clip path, make sure to add that extra thing in there as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it here once more. I'm just going to copy all of that. And then we're going to have WebKit here in the front. And so just like that, we're going to make sure that everything is compatible with as many any browsers as possible. All right, and there you have it. That is how you can create custom shapes and really cool hover animations with them on Squarespace. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know if there's anything else that you'd like to see in the future, and I will see you next time.